Hi, this is Tim Martin. In Mapping the Earth Part 1, we want to discuss the coordinate system and some basic geographic features of planet Earth. In this image, you can see me laying on the equator, and as many of us know, the equator is the line that divides both hemispheres. Let's start out talking about latitude. Latitude is the start of our system to develop a grid system from which we can identify locations on the Earth. So, let's just think for a second. What if we could open up the Earth and put a protractor down on the inside? Now, let's take some marks and find our degree markings and transfer those out to the surface of the Earth. If the equator is at zero degrees and the poles are at 90 degrees, we can figure out degree marks. Now, we can trace those lines out the whole way around the planet and these parallel lines measured in degrees north or south of the equator give us one part of our grid to establish location. Similarly, we can use longitude lines or meridians. These are lines measured east or west of the prime meridian and they'll give us the rest of our system to be able to identify positions or locations on the Earth. If we think about this, one degree of latitude is one three hundred and sixtieth of the circumference of the Earth, which turns out to be 111 kilometers. Now, that's not very precise, so very frequently we'll need to have some greater precision, and so let's talk about some of those units. There's three main systems that we use for mapping. One, sometimes referred to as DMS, or degrees, minutes, seconds, is a way to get more precise than just using the degrees of latitude and longitude. Each degree is divided into 60 equal parts that we know called minutes, and each minute is divided into 60 equal parts called seconds. Just for instance, the latitude and longitude of my school is 36 degrees, 8 minutes, 54 seconds north, 79 degrees, 50 minutes, and 15 seconds west. Another common system is degrees and decimal minutes. Below you can see the same latitude and longitude given in this format. Degrees and decimal minutes is frequently used with geocaching and other GPS mapping techniques. Finally, a more popular one recently is decimal degrees. Decimal degrees is often not referred to with north or south, east or west, but rather north becomes positive and east of the prime meridian becomes positive. So the latitude and longitude of my school would be positive 36 degrees and minus 79 degrees since we are in the Western Hemisphere. This is particularly useful for mapping applications and other numeric processes where we're going to use latitude and longitude like a basic coordinate system. Let's talk about a few of the specific geographic points. The north and south geographic poles are the location of the Earth's axis. The Earth's axis, of course, is the point around which the Earth rotates. The north and south geographic poles are designated to be 90 degrees north and 90 degrees south latitude. I've never been. I had a good friend by the name of Antony Jinman who skied from Greenland to the North Pole in 2010 and in this, on the other side of the planet he skied from the coast to the South Pole in 2014. Both of these images help us see that both the northern Arctic and the southern Antarctic are snow-covered and very desolate locations. I have had the opportunity to visit the equator, and the equator is the line of latitude that's designated with the zero degrees marking. It's also the point that is most distant from the Earth's axis. We can also say it is the greatest or longest line of latitude. 
and it does divide the Earth into northern and southern hemispheres. I had the chance to visit the equator in the country of Ecuador in 2006. A funny thing about this place, the individuals who constructed this big equator park and equator monument were slightly off. As you can see by my GPS, the top line indicating latitude shows that I was not truly on the equator. Those of you know how much of a science geek I tend to be, I wanted to visit the real equator, which turned out to be in the parking lot of a construction company across the street from the big equator monument. Notice all the zeros on the GPS. The prime meridian is the designated line of zero longitude. Over the history, there have been many points of having a prime meridian, some going through Washington, D.C., some going through Paris. Finally, in the early 1800s, international agreements were set, and it was decided that the prime meridian should be the one that went through the Royal Observatory in the United Kingdom at Greenwich. And so this is the one that has been used since the early 1800s. All points east are to the right in this map, and all points west are to the left of this line. Opposite the prime meridian is what's known as the anti-meridian, or the line of 180 degree longitude. This also effectively serves as the international date line. It's important, as long as we mark time, to have a place where days start and stop. And the international date line mostly follows the anti-meridian, or the line of 180 degrees longitude. A few of the Pacific Islands have chosen to associate with one country or another, which is why the line zigs and zags a bit. The tropics are other important designations on the planet. The northern tropic is the Tropic of Cancer. The southern tropic is the Tropic of Capricorn. They, related to the Earth's axial tilt, are 23 and a half degrees north and 23 and a half degrees south of the equator. It is between these lines that received direct sunlight. On or around the 21st of June, the Tropic of Cancer is bathed with direct sunlight. On and around the 21st of December, the Tropic of Capricorn is receiving the most direct sunlight. Likewise, the Arctic and Antarctic circles are related to the Earth's axis tilt. At 66 and a half degrees north or south latitude, the location of the Arctic circles. North of the Arctic circles, around the summer solstice, they will receive 24 hours of sunlight. Around the winter solstice, which is on or about December 21st, there will be no sunlight north of the Arctic Circle. Similarly, in the Antarctic, at the 21st of June, there will be no sunlight south of the Antarctic Circle, and at around the 21st of December, there will be 24 hours of light if you are south of the Antarctic Circle. I had a chance to visit the Arctic Circle back in 2016 in the Arctic island of Grimsey, which is just north of Iceland. Instead of posing standing on the Arctic Circle, I had to pose above the Arctic Circle. This picture was taken around 11.30 in the evening after photographing some of the local inhabitants, the adorable puffins. Another significant point for navigation is the Earth's magnetic pole. Indicated by the blue lines here, you can see the North Magnetic Pole is located in the islands north of Canada. This is distinctly different from True North or the Geographic Pole. The Magnetic Pole, of course, is where compasses point, and the Geographic Pole or True North is where the Earth's axis is located or our point of rotation. If you're using a compass for navigation, it is important that you understand your magnetic declination. 
This is the angular difference between the geographic north and magnetic north. You can see if you're located in the center of the United States, near cities like St. Louis or Memphis, Tennessee, there is no variation between the line of true north and magnetic north. However, if you're out towards Portland, Oregon, or Seattle, Washington, there is almost 20 degrees difference between magnetic north and geographic north. Finally, another concept is that of a great circle. This is really an important concept for understanding mapping. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to travel to Russia. My flight to Moscow left the United States in Chicago. One would think that I would have gotten on an airplane and flown across the Atlantic Ocean over to Moscow, passing the United Kingdom and Europe after crossing the Atlantic Ocean. But in fact, that is not the route that the airplane flew. Rather, what we did in the airplane, we flew way north into Greenland, north of Iceland, down across Norway and Sweden before arriving in Moscow. At first, it may seem a little confusing as to why the red line was the flight path. Those of you who have flown may recognize that many flight paths tend to be curved. The reason is we don't live on a flat map. It's much shorter and cheaper for the airplane to take the most direct route. And since we don't live on a flat map, what we actually live on is a sphere. You can quickly see that the shortest distance between Chicago and Moscow does indeed take you across Greenland, across Norway and Sweden, well to the north of Iceland. Great circles are the shortest distance between any two points on the surface of a sphere or globe, and thus are very useful for navigation. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again when we talk a little bit more about mapping. Thanks for watching.